Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So 32-year-old Indiana resident Curtis Tate traveled to D.C. with his husband. Yes, you heard that right, his husband, uh, because he obviously doesn't do any research. He has no idea that the Republican Party, spelled with three Ks, by the way, uh, wants to take away his rights to love whoever, whoever he chooses, whomever he chooses. Um, so anyway, they headed to the Capitol after Donald Trump's speech, and Tate was seen rushing at a police line. He was holding a metal baton over his head. So when he reached the police, Tate struck an officer's hand with the baton. So another officer stepped up. He sprayed Tate with chemicals, and then Tate retreated back into the mob. And then Tate was yelling to the crowd to keep going. And then he uploaded a couple of videos to Instagram. So the first video showed the Capitol and also the inauguration stage. And Tate captioned it, quote, before the first breach. And then the second video was of Tate yelling. And he was saying, quote, we're tearing this motherfucker down. In a third video that he captioned post second tear gas, Tate was showing off his metal baton and he yelled, quote, push forward our house. Now, sometime after that, he was seen entering the Lower West Terrace Tunnel, still holding his metal baton over his head. So it looked like he was, you know, ready to hit somebody with it. And just after he entered the mouth of the tunnel, Tate was motioning for the mob to follow him inside. And then he was seen helping to pass the stolen riot shield out of the tunnel. And then in the middle of all this, Tate shared more videos on Instagram and he showed the inside of the tunnel and he captioned them, quote, fuck all these government officials and quote, and we will not stop. Now, minutes later, he was seen on surveillance video. He charged at the officers with his baton above his head again, and he immediately and repeatedly struck a sergeant in his helmet. Once again, Tate was hit with pepper spray, so he retreated. He left the tunnel. He was then seen on the terrace. He was rinsing out his eyes. While after that, he went back to the tunnel. Instead of attacking the officers again, though, Tate picked up a speaker and he hurled it at a window of the Capitol. So you might remember there were these arched windows on either side of the, the tunnel. So he chucks the, chucks the speaker at the window. It was already cracked. So that expanded the crack. And the government said that the damage was basically over $3,100. Tate was then seen throwing that same speaker or one that looked exactly like it at the police inside the tunnel, which again was just to the right of this window. And that speaker hit an officer in the arm and then that, that caused him to drop his baton. Then Tate was seen throwing a shoe. It struck the same officer. Not too long after that, Tate was seen again at the Senate window and he was passing broken pieces of furniture and other stuff out to the mob. Obviously, that stuff was used against the police as weapons. We all saw that. And Tate himself used one of these improvised weapons against the police. So he headed back to the tunnel and he was seen holding a broken table leg and it had a nail protruding out of the end of it. So Tate chucked that table leg at the police at pretty close range. And the prosecutor said, unfortunately, they couldn't really determine if it hit any of the officers because by that time, the surveillance camera was so blurred by all of the chemicals that were being sprayed inside the tunnel. It just was too blurry. They couldn't make anything out. And Tate still wasn't done. So he continued on. So minutes after that attack, he was seen helping other people carry this long piece of lumber toward the tunnel entrance. And then a short time after that, he was seen throwing a floor lamp at the officers in the tunnel. Several minutes after that, Tate was seen brandishing an officer's stolen baton. I don't know what happened to his own, but he had the baton. This was the police officer's baton. And he was holding it over his head again while facing off against the police. 
By that time, luckily, reinforcements had arrived. So the police started to shoot tear gas into the crowd. So finally, after three hours of just back-to-back -back assaults by this guy, Tate finally at that point left the Capitol grounds. Um, all of the officers injured by Tate were interviewed by the FBI, and they all remembered him. One sustained a concussion, the, the, the one who was hit by the speaker. And then another officer had such severe PTSD after January 6th, he had to retire. So the FBI interviewed Tate as well. That was on January 13th of 2021. He admitted that he was at the Capitol. He said, yes, I had a metal baton, but he falsely stated he didn't see anyone enter the Capitol. And then Tate also denied breaking the window and he feigned outrage over the violence at the Capitol. So he admitted there was violence, but he pretended like, oh, I, I wasn't me. I didn't do it. And whoever did was horrible. <laughs> and then the agents warned Tate, you know, lying to a federal agent is a crime. He stuck with his story though, like, nope, nope. And he said, there was, quote, nothing that would compel him to do something like vandalize a building hurt anybody or try to break in a building. And Tate said he didn't agree, quote, with them destroying shit, breaking shit, destroying our historic house. And then in March of 2023, so he still hadn't been arrested, um, he was interviewed by USA Today and he again lies about what he did at the Capitol. So Tate said that he would, quote, never hurt an officer I come from a military background. I'm very respectful of our military and police. I know I didn't hurt anybody. I'm not speaking here bold as brass because you never know what can happen. But I've never ever once hurt or put my hands on an officer. I never did it. So I'm not going to live the rest of my life in fear. So Tate was arrested on August 24th of 2023, and he was charged with assaulting officers with a deadly or dangerous weapon, civil disorder, entering a restricted building or grounds, two counts of disorderly conduct, two counts of physical violence, and destruction of government property. He was held without bond because of the violence in involved in his crimes. And while he was in the DC jail on pretrial detention, he was calling in to the people that you guys know are out there on quote unquote freedom corner you know they live stream several times a, a week i think it is or i don't know how often to be honest but anyway he called into them a few times and again he plays the victim you know he falsely said that the fbi searched his car without a warrant that is completely bogus um, and then of course he asked for donations and in February of 2024, Tate accepted a plea deal. He accepted it for three counts of assaulting officers with a dangerous weapon. Even after that though, he still wasn't honest about his actions. So two days after he accepted that plea, there was an article that was published in the Gateway Pundit. And it said that it was written by the founder of the site, which is Jim Hoft, but it was written in the first person and it was Tate's story. And in it, he wrote that the police initiated the violence. They started it. <laughs> and then Tate admitted, yeah, he was at the Capitol to stop the certification of the election, but he made it sound like, oh, you know, I just pleaded guilty for protesting. Never mention violence. Never mention that he pleaded to three counts of assaulting officers. So in any case, Based on his actual plea deal, he faced up to 20 years in prison, three years of probation, and 250000 in fines for each of those three counts. Now, the government requested a sentence of only 78 months in prison, so six and a half years, plus they asked for three years of probation and then the $3,176 in restitution to cover the cost of the window. And you guys are going to be so shocked to hear he has a history of drug and alcohol abuse. And when he was arrested, he was in a drug rehab facility. Um, you guys are going to be equally shocked to hear 
he has an extensive criminal history. It dates all the way back to 2012. So Tate's charges include and convictions include operating a vehicle without a license, criminal damage to property and disorderly intoxication, possession of oxycodone and drinking in public, speeding, reckless driving, driving with an expired registration, suspicion of driving under the influence, and refusal to take a breath test, driving with a suspended license, possession of weed, and leaving the scene of an accident. He also has pending charges against him at this moment for drug distribution. And he committed some of these crimes multiple times. So some of those, that, that lengthy list of charges I just read to you, some of those were, you know, duplicates. Um, so U.S. District Judge Christopher Cooper presided over Tate's case. And when all was said and done, he sentenced Tate to 63 months in prison, three years of probation, and the $3,176 in restitution. Judge Cooper has always been weak in these cases, so I'm not surprised that he let him off so easy. Still pisses me off, though. You know, this guy assaulted how many officers with weapons, and he gets just over five years? Yeah, nowhere near enough. Um, at least he has some serious felonies on his record now. You know, he's not going to be voting in November, that's for sure. Uh, he probably won't be out of prison until Trump is long gone. Anyway, nice thought. All right. I will let you all know if I hear any more. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, please share, and subscribe to the channel. Please donate if you can. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.